Hello everyone, back tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at whether next week to 10 days for today's second video. So it's going to take us into middle of December. We'll go to around 15th of a month um, with this uh, update up to day 10. Actually a bit beyond that because the GFS extends around two weeks. So I'll bring up to date everything that's going on in terms of next week's colder weather. It is going to get colder next week. There's a little bit of model wobbling beginning to take place about this easterly uh, it's never straightforward to get wind into the east in this country or very rarely is it straightforward and there are there is a little bit of model wobbling going on uh, with it but i'll touch for everything that's happening at them uh, in a moment um we'll also have a look at what's happening in the stratosphere uh, more interesting developments over the uh, north part in terms of the stratospheric forecast i'll bring you up to date uh, with that, um, and uh, also have the Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation information as well. So uh, a lot to cram into video. I hope you find it interesting and informative. We're going to start off though by giving a uh, mention and a thank you to our latest uh, patrons and donors. So we have had two more um, patrons for Gazwell Mids. So I'm going to say a big thank you to um, Philip Gregg. A big thank you to Philip Gregg for becoming uh, Gazwell Mids. Uh, Forty-seventh uh, patron, and then I'm going to say big thank you to Jason Edwards from EML Recordings, EML Recordings YouTube channel, uh, and um, Jason has become our forty-eighth patron. So big thank you to Philip. Big thank you uh, to Jason for becoming our 47th, 48th uh, patrons. Do check out EML uh, recordings uh, on YouTube if you'd like to um, do that. Uh, so if you want, if you'd like to become a patron for Gazovitz, as uh, Jason and also Philip have done, then all you need to do is come to Gazovitz's uh, patron page. This is it. Uh, we link to this in the description at YouTube and on all the pages at Gazovitz. So just come here, sign up for a patron account, and then you can give us an ongoing uh, monthly donation. It can be anything as little as $1 a month upwards. It doesn't have to be a large amount of money at all. And, uh, of course, all of the patrons um, have been uh, incredibly uh, generous to us over the past few months. We started this in, um, in June, and I didn't expect to get anywhere near uh, close to 50 patrons. We are trying to get to 50 patrons by Christmas. Whether we'll be able to do it or not, I'm not sure. But um, that's it. Become a patron uh, for Gazos. You'll be having us do... Uh, fund our website by doing that. Uh, then I'm also going to say a big thank you to our latest uh, pay, uh, PayPal donor. So I'm going to say thank you to Sean Mullen. Big thank you to Sean for becoming a uh, donor. The gas of his via uh, PayPal. So this is a, like a one-off um, donation through PayPal, and you can just come to gas of his PayPal page, uh, sign in to your PayPal account. Again, we link to this on all the pages at YouTube and at gas of his signing to PayPal account. And then you can pledge uh, a one-off donation. You'll get a shout-out in the video. Uh, and a big thank you to say um, thank you for doing that uh, and supporting the website. So, uh, again, that's how you can become a donor and uh, a patron for Gaz. Well, it's, um, you're helping us to fund our uh, our content, keep the website uh, online. So, big thank you to all of you for doing that for um, for Gaz. Well, it's, it really does mean uh, a great deal. I say you'll get a mention in the videos whether you become a patron or you're a donor as long as you want one a couple of people have chosen to stay anonymous that's absolutely fine we'll just say thank you to this anonymous donor if you would rather do it like that just leave a little note with your donation and uh, you'll still get a thank you in the video from uh, myself but uh, we won't announce um, your name so uh, again that's how you can do it if you would like to and a big thank you to all of the patrons a big thank you to all of the donors for Gazweather Vids and we're going on with today's video. So we're going to start off by having a look at the Arctic and North Atlantic Oscillation Observed and Forecast Charts. So the black line here tells where we've been with the AO. The red line's at the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. So back in the summer, we can go right way back into summer with this. The Arctic Oscillation was in positive territory generally. Stayed in positive territory through the first part of the autumn as well. A change took place uh, as we moved in towards November. We went a little bit negative with the AO and then later in November through the second half of month went very negative actually 
with the Arctic Oscillation. We are still negative at the moment, to be honest. We haven't recovered yet from that uh, bout of negativity of the AO. However, GFS Ensembles are showing in the next week or so, we are going to be going positive into positive territory, but probably not lasting all that long. Within around a week, 10 days' time, it looks like we're going to be back into solidly negative territory again. Um, and that takes us through beyond the middle part of the December just there. Now, the AO is just an index that's reflecting the state of the atmosphere. It's not driving anything. It just tells you what the atmosphere is doing. So, when the AO is in its positive phase, you've got low pressure up over the pole. And at this time of year, low pressure over, over pole will keep cold air bottled up over the North Pole, and it'll tend to strengthen the westerlies through the mid latitude. So a positive AO at this time of year tends to be associated with milder, wetter, Atlantic-driven type conditions, whereas a negative AO, that tends to be associated with high pressure over the pole, it tends to be associated with blocking, and blocking is a route to push a cold air out of the pole and down into the mid latitude. So when you get a negative AO, it'll, it'll tend to go along at this time of year with cold conditions. Of course, the exact position of the blocking is a critical factor because you can't guarantee uh, exactly where the high pressure is going to be sitting. So not everywhere uh, in the Northern Hemisphere is going to be able to get cold from a blocking area of high pressure over the pole. It could be that the cold air is pushed down into Canada and North America, for example, or into Asia. So it's not a guarantee that we're going to be turning cold if we have a negative AO. But... It is one of the things that we look out for to tell us that we may get colder conditions. We've also got the NAO observed and forecast chart. So again, same idea. Black line tells us where we've been with the NAO. Red lines are the end where GFS ensembles are forecasting the NAO to go in the next two weeks. Just as with the AO, this is an index that's reflecting the state of the atmosphere this time in the North Atlantic as opposed to the North Pole. It's not driving anything, it just tells you what the atmosphere is doing. Again, back into the summer, we were seeing a prolonged positive phase of the NEO going right way back into the middle of the uh, summer month. A change took place again through the second half of the autumn as the AO dipped and went down more towards neutral. And then in the second half of November, we went into a, positive, in, into a negative phase of the NAO. Where we are right now is slightly positive with the NAO. It looks like it'll be staying positive if GFS summers are right for the next few days. But again, similar uh, to the Arctic Oscillation, it looks like the North Atlantic Oscillation will also be going into negative territory as we move into the middle part of December. So this is telling us that both the indexes are falling away into negative territory. Something's going on with the, within the atmosphere, therefore, that will probably lead us to cold Older conditions, and of course, that's what the model output has been showing very recently with the Arctic and North Atlantic oscillations both indicating a switch to negativity. Now, in terms of the stratosphere, we've been keeping an eye on this through winter updates. So, of course, this is weatherischool.com, and it's showing you the uh, strength of the zonal winds at 10 HPA, which is kind of like one of the top levels of the atmosphere in the North Pole. It shows us how the zonal winds have been performing through this season, but we've also got forecasts here for how the GFS in the next couple of weeks, and then the CFS V2 for the next few months, forecasting the zonal winds to behave. So at the moment, the black line, of course, is like the trend for this time of the year. So the zonal winds should be strengthening as it turns colder in the stratosphere over the North Pole. Uh, at the moment, uh, we're around we're around where we should be, to be honest, we're around that black line. But a lot of the GFS ensembles are doing over the next couple of weeks, this would be tying in, I suppose, with the change to the negative AO. The um, GFS ensembles are forecasting a real collapse in the strength of the zone winds. There's actually one or two ensemble members are going down here, going down to the zero line, which is kind of like taking us into a reversal of the zone winds. That tends to be something that happens where you get a sudden stratospheric warming. Um, now, most of these uh, members of the GF ensembles at the moment are not going down to that kind of level. They're not going to reversal, but the mean uh, thick green... Job to make it out, there's a thick green line just there, which is kind of like the mean of the um, of the GFS samples. That's some way short of a reversal of the uh, zonal winds at 10 HPA over North Pole. But um, it is dipping down a lot. I mean, this is where we're starting off at, just here. And in the next couple of weeks, by the end of the uh, ensemble, GFS samples running to two weeks, of course, it's down there. So that is quite a dramatic plunge in the 
uh, strength of the zone of wings being forecast by the GFS ensembles. And then the other coloured lines, the three pink and one blue line, may have the four CFS runs. Um, and most of those are through the second half of December or the early part of January, sometime in the next three or four weeks anyway, uh, most of those are going for uh, a reversal of the zone of wings at 10 HPA. So these CFS runs are seeing a sudden stratospheric warming because a reversal of the zone of wings at 10 HPA would be something that would uh, coincide with a sudden stratospheric warming. So, again, developments are thought to the stratosphere. There's been an ongoing uh, thing that we've been noticing as we do winter updates. We've been looking at these charts from weatheriscool.com during the winter updates. They're finished now, of course, the winter updates. We released the gas of his winter forecast on Sunday. But throughout this season of winter updates, we have been keeping a close eye on this chart. And throughout the autumn, really, it's been apparent that CFS has been forecasting uh, some sort of early sun stratospheric warming, because bear in mind this would tend to happen later in the winter, it would tend to happen through the end of January into um, February, so to get this in December or early January is quite unusual, last time it hap would have happened that early would be back in the winter of 2012-13 when there was a big sun stratospheric warming at the beginning of January 2013 over the North Pole, so that's the kind of thing I reckon that the CFS is forecast, but it might happen even earlier than that. Because I say, you have got one or two members of the GFS ensemble that are going down to that level, which is a reversal of the zone of winds. And I suspect those are doing that by picking up on a sudden stratospheric warming. This is the uh, forecast for the temperature at 10 HPA over the North Pole from the GFS parallel run. Now, I showed you this yesterday. This is from metrosteel.fr. Uh, in terms of the GFS operational run yesterday, the GFS operational was hinting at the beginnings of the sun stratospheric warming by around the 20th of uh, December. It's backed off a little bit today, the GFS operational, but the GFS parallel is now seeing something quite dramatic going on. So, again, I'm running you through. You see these blue and purple colours. Those are the cold temperatures in the stratosphere uh, at 10 HPA over the North Pole. But look what happens when we get through to the final slides. We see this big warming beginning to appear over Siberia and starting to infiltrate in towards the uh, North Pole. That is the 21st of December. It's 384 hours away. So it's a very long way out. But it does look as though the parallel... Uh, GFS run is is hinting there at a sudden stratospheric one beginning to get going around the 21st of December. Now, what can happen with this model, the GFS, is that it starts to pick up on the possibility of a stratospheric warming, um, but it can be a little bit too quick with it. So I suspect what's going on here is that it's just a little bit too early, and I would think that the sun stratospheric warming is more likely to be like the end of December, say around Christmas or New Year, or possibly through the first week or so of January. I reckon the GFS is starting to sniff it out, but it's probably doing it a little bit too quickly. Um, but we shall see. We shall keep an eye on it. It might happen before Christmas, but I would suspect it's more likely after Christmas. But I don't think we're going to have to wait until, as we would normally do in a, in a normal winter, we would have to wait until the end of January or February, really, uh, to see sun stratospheric warming. I think this year it's going to happen uh, quite a lot earlier. I think we will get one as well. It could be a very intense, very big sun stratospheric warming when it happens. I think it's going to happen uh, a lot earlier this uh, year. So, obviously, we will be keeping a very close eye on that. If it happens early, could be that uh, we're going to get some very cold weather this winter. But, as I say, we'll keep a close eye on it. Right, these are the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles. Let's go weeks. The red line here is a 30-year upper air temperature average for London. We're looking at London uh, today. So it's going milder again over the next couple of days. Temperatures are going to be lifting up, becoming very mild uh, through to the end of the week. Then over the weekend, we get this uh, drop in the temperature taking place. And then early next week, uh, the temperature will drop even more. So we're going to take the high pressure to Scandinavia and we're going to start to pull colder air from the east. How much cold air we pull in from the east is open 
to some question, and I'll talk you through uh, why that is very shortly. But certainly it's going colder through the course of next week, or most ensemble members, let's say. There are a few up here that are milder, but most ensemble members that are going colder through the course of next week. And then we're going to the second half of December, this period just here, beginning to run up towards Christmas now, of course. 21st of December is as far as we can go with the GFS at the moment. And uh, generally staying a little bit below average, actually. Generally staying a little bit below the red line, even into the third week of uh, December. Also looks quite unsettled. Plenty of rainfall coming up with this milder stuff in the next few days. Then as it turns colder, it turns drier over weekend and into next week. But then through next week, the precipitation spikes start to come back. And that's where the uncertainty is lying. How much energy is the Atlantic going to throw at this Scandinavian high? And will the Scandinavian high be able to withstand it? That's where the uncertainty is creeping in. Remember, for December, we have never... Uh, really been forecasting a particularly cold month. We said we're looking in December for a colder interlude to tell us that the winter forecast is on track. We're expecting a period of colder weather, maybe a couple, maybe one through the middle of the month, one towards the end of the month, a couple of periods of colder weather in an otherwise generally very unsettled uh, and not particularly cold month. In fact, in the December forecast, we went for attempt to be a little bit milder than average, if anything. Uh, and then it starts to get much more interesting as we go into January and February from a cold perspective. So this would all tie in with what we're expecting for December, really. Uh, an initial push of colder weather, a colder interlude, but the Atlantic then starting to throw the energy back in and the Scandinavian high, at least for a while, backing away. Temperature anomalies are looking like this from the 5th through to the 13th of December. Colder than average now for Scotland. Still a little bit above average for England, Wales and uh, much of Ireland. I would suspect those are going to train colder in the next couple of days. Precipitation anomalies from the 5th through to the 13th of December. Uh, average to possibly a little bit wetter than average for England and Wales. A little bit drier than average for Scotland. And that just hints uh, again that it's uh, that actually going to be on a bit of a subly track taking more of a rain down into the south as opposed to the north. This is how the GFS is looking for Saturday. Low pressure is going to be in control as we go into the weekend. We start Saturday in between areas of low pressure. That's the storm from Friday. It's going to give us severe gales in the north. And this low pressure just here will give us a very soggy end to Saturday. But we begin Saturday actually under this little transient bump of high pressure, but it really won't last very long. By the time we get through to Sunday, that low pressure, the second low that's in the Atlantic on Saturday, that's out of the way on Sunday. And then we turn the wind into a colder northerly. We get this build of pressure across the country through to the early part of next Next week, there's a high pressure going up to Scandinavia on Tuesday, so that is all very much in line. Uh, and we do get the high pressure to Scandinavia by Wednesday. It's sat there over Scandinavia. The wind is pulling in from the east, so we are pulling cold air in from the east. But look at this deep area of low pressure out in the middle of the Atlantic. That's a very intense area of low pressure indeed. And so uh, that low pressure begins to move in to the ridge as we go through to Thursday. So we've still got the high pressure maintained over Scandinavia on Thursday next week. We've got the low pressure in the middle of the Atlantic. And we're sending energy in from off the Atlantic. Now, there is a cold, um, a wedge of cold air that sat over the UK. It's been introduced by that easterly wind. The low pressure is trying to bring milder air in from off the Atlantic. As the two air masses clash, there might be some snow with that. It would depend on the exact... Uh, parameters within the atmosphere at the time we wouldn't know until next week but that's a kind of situation that can produce a snow event if the milder Atlantic air stalls as it comes up against the colder air. Now, eventually, by taking it through to Friday next week, this is Friday 14th December, we push that weather system through. So the Atlantic winds of battle, the high pressure starts to recede back away to the east, and we go into a much more mobile pattern once again. Uh, in the second half of the month, low pressure is in control, bringing again showers or longer spells of rain. That's how we uh, look as we move up towards the end of a GFS run, which takes us, I say, to Friday 21st of December, back in an Atlantic flow. So at least temporarily, the Atlantic winds pushes that Scandinavian high back into the west of Russia, 
and we go into a westerly phase again with more wet weather driving in from off the Atlantic. So just a short cold spell with maybe a snow event next Thursday and then the Atlantic winds. This is how the parallel run of the GFS is always. So that was the operational run. This is the parallel that we keep talking about. This will become the operational GFS next year. Again, unsettled over weekend. Term winds into the north on Monday. Then we get the build of high pressure through the country uh, through Monday to Tuesday. Take the high pressure up to Scandinavia. There it goes on Tuesday. The high is in over Scandinavia on Wednesday, but doesn't really get the opportunity to bring those winds into the east, actually, before for the next low pressure starting to head in from off the Atlantic. So very quickly, we move low pressure in off the Atlantic. We don't really introduce any particularly cold air from the east with this latest parallel run of the GFS. It just remains very unsettled. High pressure continues to be sitting up to the northeast, and we remain under this big area of low pressure over the UK, bringing more wet weather. In the extended range with the parallel uh, GFS run, we look like this. Begin to start pumping up the pressure again uh, as we go into the second half of the month. So that's how we look at the very end of the parallel run of the GFS on Friday, the 21st of December. High pressure is taking over uh, to our east. We're turning the wind into a sort of southerly southeasterly. That'll probably be quite cold, actually. Uh, there's no particularly mild source of air with that, and the air's coming off the continent, so that will probably bring increasingly frosty, maybe foggy conditions as we're running up towards the new year. This is uh, how the GM is looking. So, again, rather unsettled over the weekend. There's those normally winds for the early part of next week. There's a push of pressure trying to get itself up to Scandinavia on Tuesday. Doesn't really make it with the GM. Look at this. Low pressure just rolls in from off the Atlantic. And we never really set up a Scandinavian high. So, there is quite a bit of uncertainty about this Scandinavian high next week. I have to say, it's never easy to get high pressure over Scandinavia. As I say, the key part of getting high pressure over Scandinavia is getting it there. Uh, once you get it there, you can lock in to quite a prolonged block situation, but it's always, where it goes wrong, is always in building the pressure up to Scandinavia in the first place. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. We have actually got high pressure over Scandinavia by the end of next week, Friday the 14th of December. These areas of low pressure, the energy in the Atlantic, just not really allowing that to gain a foothold up to day 10 anyway with the GEM, which again is Saturday the 15th of December. We remain in a relatively mild southwesterly wind. The ECM, if you want these cold EC wings next week, the ECM is the best, and uh, that's what we're going to finish with. So uh, we start again over weekend looking unsettled. We get wind into the north by the end of the weekend and the start of next week. There's a high pressure reaching through the country. Much more strongly, you'll notice, starting to move up to Scandinavia by uh, Tuesday. And there we are. We're up into Wednesday. We have got a proper area of high pressure over Scandinavia. It's made it. I say it's always getting that high to Scandinavia. That's the key uh, factor. And on this ECM run, the high has made it to Scandinavia, which is allowing the wind to go to a proper EC. If you're following the isobars back, and no other model is doing this uh, this morning, but if you follow the isobars back, that's where the air is originated from. It's from Russia. It's moving down across northern Europe into the UK. So that is not only the one run that has a genuine Scandinavian high, it's also a lot colder as well going through the course of next week. Probably bringing snow showers in from the east across England and Wales in particular. Uh, and then as we move, move up towards day 10, that's how we're looking. Low pressure is trying to break in from the Atlantic. But because this high pressure is so much stronger over Scandinavia, the low pressure is struggling and stalling. And so here we are on Friday the 14th and then through to Saturday the 15th. And this will be bringing snow. This will be a snow event that the ECM is forecasting as this low pressure comes up against this Scandinavia. Scandinavian high. It's really struggling to introduce those milder Atlantic winds. And so not only do we have a much stronger Scandinavian high, because of that we have a much better easterly wind, because of that we have much greater chance of snow showers through the middle part of next week. And then because of all of that, the low pressure coming off the Atlantic struggles much more and that will be a stalling uh, low pressure across the country with a stalling weather front. And you would expect a snow event towards the end of next week. 
with the ECM WF, much more wintering from the ECM uh, compared to the other models this morning. This is how the postage stamps are looking finally from the ECM WF ensembles. This is for uh, next week. This is for the 12th of uh, December, which is a week away, a uh, week today. So the position of this high pressure, look at this, the ECM ensembles are uh, got 16 ensemble members that have the high pressure up here to the north of the UK, back to Scandinavia, with low pressure to our southeast. They're pulling in cold easterly winds. And then we have a further four team that look like bad. Again, the high pressure is to the north of the UK, uh, not quite as far back to Scandinavia as V16, and that does include the operational ECM to the model we are just looking at, by the way. Um, but these would still be cold on some members. We will still be bringing in wind from an east or northeasterly direction. Then we've got another 13 that have the high pressure again. A little bit further south, but they're still cold bees. They're still bringing winds in from the east. None of these on some members are moving energy in from off the Atlantic, interestingly, like the GFS is showing uh, in a week's time. And then another eight have the high pressure, again, to the north of Scotland and just going back to Scandinavia. Again, these are primarily easterly or northeasterly, but quite settled with those. The high pressure is reaching down over the top of the UK. So, um, interesting that the ECM is much more buoyant, uh, I think, much more bullish about high pressure towards Scandinavia and easterly winds towards the middle of next week compared to what we've just looked at from the GFS, which is trying to bring the uh, energy in from off the Atlantic as early as the middle of next week and really struggling to establish proper easterly winds. At day 10, ECM postage stamps finally are looking uh, like this. So they're turning more unsettled with a trough of low pressure moving in from off the Atlantic uh, with these 16 ensemble members, including the control and the operational uh, ECMWF runs. Then we've got a further 13 that look like that, again, bringing energy in from off the Atlantic. But uh, both of these solutions are very blocked still, both of them with high pressure blocking things out to our north. So there could presumably, even at day 10, be quite cold air still moving in from the east, particularly with this solution. Uh, then we've got another 11 at day 10 that has a high pressure really dominating to the northeast. And these are bringing in cold east or southeast winds. They're cold and dry, uh, primarily. Another six looking like that at day 10 with high pressure bridging into the UK. But the scent is from the northeast, so they're still cold, really. They're still bringing wind in from a uh, from a sort of northeasterly direction. And then five have the high pressure generally centred out to the west of the UK uh, then. So these ones are moving milder air in around the top of the high pressure from off the Atlantic. That is a very minimal solution. And most of those ECM ensemble members seem to be keeping things pretty blocked quite cold up to day 10. So there's a lot of uncertainty about this, as you always get when you uh, bring blocking into the mix. You always get a lot of uncertainty within the model output. That's what we're seeing uh, yet again. The key thing to focus on at the moment is the early and middle part of next week. Do we get the high pressure to Scandinavia? And if we do get the high pressure to Scandinavia, do we get wind into the east properly? The, uh, the um, East MDF, as we just established, and many of its ensemble members, do, uh, does bring in a proper easterly wind through the early and middle part of next week. Because of that, it's a much colder week next week. There's a risk of snow showers in the east, and it all finishes up um, with risk of a snow event. Whereas the GFS, it does get the high pressure to Scandinavia, but the energy in the Atlantic is so strong that actually we never really get the wind into the east properly uh, before we start to throw energy back in from off the Atlantic, possibly still with the snow event as um, that energy comes up against the block over Scandinavia. Even on the GFS solution, you wouldn't be ruling out significant snow uh, for a time anyway before milder air pushes back in. But the difference between the two is that the ECM is quite hinting at quite a prolonged cold spell, whereas the GFS is relatively short. So we should wait and see on that. There'll be more chopping and changing within model output over the next few days, but eventually we will agree, I think, on where this is going through the course of next week. Right, been a very extended video today, nearly half an hour. There's a lot going on. I hope you found it interesting and informative. Um, there'll be more tomorrow, so keep checking back for the updates. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.